This is part of the series of videos on LC3 programming. And specifically, I'm going to look at the trap instruction. Uh, it is the trap which accesses a service uh, provided by the OS. Um, so it's a service call that we make to access a service of the OS. There, this is an in addition to the video that I previously made on traps introducing what traps do. The reason why I'm doing this is because um, because depending upon which software there's uh, the software tools that have been written for LC3 there's two tools that are popular one is the old uh, set of tools which has a uh, a uh, piece of software called LC3 Edit and another software called LC3 Simulate. Um, this is the classic one that has been around for a long time. And then there's a new tool. This is the newer one, the new tool which is uh, which is which uses uh, it's called LC3 Tools. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because in the new tool there is has been a change in how the how traps are implemented and this will 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 cause a cause problems um, if your assumptions are wrong so let's take a look at what each of these do uh, to understand um, how we can cope with the differences between the two so uh, let's look at first how lc3 tools works in lc3 tools which is again the new one. This is the new one. The way the way things work are as described in my video, which is if I let's take a simple example. Let's say we have some code at x three thousand, uh, which is I uh, have an lea r not um, uh, a label greet and greet is down here and greet is just a dot strings. Uh, with let's say howdy so we want to print this out so the way, way we do it, it at 3001 we're going to have a trap to x22 which is really the puts system call, uh, puts um, call service call and then maybe we just end the program with a, th a trap x25 which is a halt and let's say this is our entire code and there's probably a dot end and so on. So let's not worry about that. So what happens when we run this code? So what we know is the memory as we know, uh, the, the part of the memory where the trap vector table lives is at um, x0000, really that's really the trap vector number, um, but the the real entries in the trap vector table are at 0020 up to x0025 but the one I'm actually accessing is 0022 and so let's take a look at what what happens so we have these two that we are running as subroutine as service routines so what happens when we execute this instruction so if you if you recall we also said that in our system, we uh, x22 has a address of a routine that will run some some service routine, if you will, service code that will run, and the address of that is stored here. Similarly, this and I'm just going to call this a puts service is is there, um, and similarly there is one for our halt service so wherever this is it's going to point to another piece of code which is what the halt service is and that's the other piece of code that we have so let's take a look at what what processing this instruction involves so what does it mean to execute this instruction or run this instruction the execution of this instruction is a two-step process. The first step is we save PC and PSR on the stack. We call, we say they're pushed onto the stack. 
and we know that in our system our stack starts at so this is our system stack if you will and the system stack is at x2 f f f so what we are saying is there are two things that are pushed up here at x2 f f f and 2 f f e so we will push psr here and the pc here and for now i'm just going to assume that let's say the psr has a value of 8002 um, and this guy has a value of uh, right now because I'm pushing the current value of PC when I'm executing that instruction that's going to be a value uh, let me change the color that's going to be an X3002 and this is going to be a X8002 I'm just assuming that the PSR value at this point has uh, this is the the user supervisor bit which is a mode bit which is a one and the NZP bits are here and let's assume that the NZP bits are zero one zero to start with okay so that's why it was an eight zero zero two the second step that's gonna happen is we're gonna take the look up the trap vector table and we're going to use the, the instruction registers because the trap is part of the instruction register now. We're going to zero extend the, the 8 bit number that's there. Really, it's uh, zero extend the IR's bits 11 through 0 and zero extend that so we can put two zeros or how many ever zeros it needs and then look that up in the TVT. So what that does then is the, the effect of these two instructions is for us to uh, find ourselves, the PC finds itself here. So this code executes now, whatever the code is. What happens when, when it completes? So there is an instruction here, and this special instruction here is an RTI instruction. Um, what is more, let's let's actually take a, a step back here. Um, in the act of doing this, we've pushed the stuff onto the stack. So one of the other things that happens, and this is a subtle point that is not obvious for us, we use R6, the register R6 is called the stack pointer. And in other words, it points to the top element of the stack. So right now it has a value of x 2 f f e that's how the system keeps track of where the top of the stack is and what is on the stack right now because the rti the purpose of the rti instruction which is this instruction here it does only one step which is to pop or restore the pc and psr from the stack in other words once it restores it it's gonna pc is gonna get back the value x3002 psr gets back the value x8002 and actually r6 is updated because we pop two things r6 goes back to being x3000 because you increment in two steps so the net effect is is that the after this instruction is done we find ourselves on the next line and that's exactly what we expect so let's confirm that this is indeed what's happening by running our code in lc3 tools so this is our lc3 tools i'm going to assemble it and i'm going to run it and I'm going to first make sure I initialize the machine so there's no leftover stuff. Uh, right now we see that the PSR is 8002, the PC is 3000. And I'm going to step in on the first instruction that updated my R0 to 3003, which is where my uh, the string is. And now I'm going to step in. So notice that R6 is 0, R7 is 0, PSR is that and that. So I'm going to step in. And once I step in, I notice that R6 has become 2FFE because that's the stack pointer. In fact, I'm going to go to X2FFE. 
E and see what's out there. And we notice that there is the PSR, which is 3000, sorry, PC, which is 3002, and the PSR, which is 8002. They've been pushed on the stack. So, so now we, we get through our instructions. So I'm going to step over whatever line I, I'm at. And so I'm going to put a breakpoint right here at the RTI because I don't want to walk through this. So I'm going to just run through this code. And now I'm going to return from this. And the act of returning it should pop the two, two things off the stack. So I'm going to step over on this line. And I find myself back at 3002. And, and interestingly, because the PC, because the stack pointer doesn't have any purpose anymore, it's been restored. So, so stack pointer really should be that. So the stack pointer should become 3000, but it has been restored to what its old value is. So the stack pointer itself is, the stack pointer itself is that, but it's 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 stored in a location called the saved stack pointer. And we set it back there and R6 goes back to its old value. In this case, it was zero to start with, so it's gonna go back to zero. So let's take a look at what this, what used to be the case and what is still the case with the older tool, which is the LC3, um, which is the case with our LC3 uh, let me use a different color here. Let's see what it used to be for LC3 edit plus simulate. It's not so much the editor as it's the simulator that we are interested in. And this is the old one. In the old, in the old system, the same code that we had, which is, I'm going to repeat it here, 3000 has an LEA, R0, greet and x3001 has an a trap to x22 and 3002 had a trap uh, to x25 we don't really care that there was the trap there we didn't really run it it's just to halt the machine at x3003 we had a dot uh, uh, this was the greet label greet with a dot strings with a howdy. So in the in the older simulator, we don't really use the stack. So it does not. So it does not use stack. The system stack for traps. The rest of it is still similar. Instead, it uses register R7 like subroutines would. So our trap vector table is still referred to as before. When I execute a trap with a 2-2, I still will go to a piece of code which is uh, which is where my puts is. And the, there is code there, but the difference is it's no longer, it didn't, it, it's not an RTI, it is an RET. And you may recall that RET is just a synonym for jump R7, which means that on execution, on executing this line, on execution, of this line, the steps that were actually performed, that are actually performed is R7 gets the value of the PC. In this case, it's gonna get the value X3002. And, and PC gets the, gets the PVTs, zero extended, IR, bits 11 through zero and i i find myself as soon as i make that call i find myself branched off from here to this but the linkage is through 
R7. In the newer system, the linkage is through the stack. So, so now when we when we go off there and execute the code on on return. So, what does return do? We said that return does a single step, and the single step it does. Return does a single step and the single step it performs is simply set the PC back to R7. So PC is restored back to X3002, which means that when I do the return, I'm going to find myself on that line and I continue execution. So, so the problem really is that if you are using the if you write your code and you use the new simulator then then your r7 is not touched but if you use an old simulator then r7 is destroyed in the process and if you have something in r7 then then you're gonna have trouble uh, with with your code uh, here's a specific instance let's say i have a subroutine that i write and uh, let's let's say let's call this I'm gonna change this let's say this is my main program somewhere in my main program I did a JSR sub and the subroutine that I wrote is making a call to trap let's simply say it's printing something out it's doing a trap x22 and when it finishes it does a return which is a jump r7 right so in the in the old simulator what would happen is you'd go from here to here and let's say r7 is currently updated r7 is holding the address of the next line which is this you go in here you make a trap call so you go off to the system you execute the system but r7 now is pointing to this address right here so when you finish and you do a jump r7 you should really your goal is to come back to this line. That is your actual idea. But what really ends up happening is because your R7 has been destroyed, you go back to this line. And that's something you don't want happening. So, so if you are going to use the old simulator for some reason, um, maybe because you like it or you that's the one you, you're used to, then what you ought to do is make sure you save r7 here and then restore r7 here so if you save the current value of r7 which is this guy right here let's call this xx if you take this guy and we to save it in some memory location x if i were to save it then i'll write it there and when i'm done i'm gonna read it back and this will force me to come back to the original position. I hope that helps. Uh, in fact, I am going to just show you how this works by running this in our in the older simulator. This is the edit and simulate. So I'm going to assemble it. I'm going to reinitialize my machine, and I'm going to load this program, which happens to be called Howdy. So I'm going to step, uh, you will notice the console is probably here. So I'm going to step over, actually let's step in. And right now you will notice that R7 is a zero, but I, as soon as I step in, you will notice that R7 has a value 3002. In fact, if I scroll up and look at what's on the system stack, which is, which is at, um, actually let's go to the system stack, which happens to be at 3000. If I go scroll up, I notice that these two locations have nothing in them because we're not using the system stack. So, so now if I were to step over, you'll notice that the last line here is no longer a is is not a it's not a RTI, but it's a return, which basically will get me back to my original place. I hope that explains it. <laughs>